Hello up bags, it's Jay, welcome to another Grounded Guide today. I'm going to show you some of the better mechanics that are in the update, pretty much how to access certain things quicker and easier, and some of the components you're going to need now to get through things like giant massive rocks and being able to turn off the haze. Leave a like if you like it, found it useful, and let's go. Okay, so you're going to need a tier 2 shovel, basically the black ant shovel, to get some of the gum. Now, if you haven't got gum already, there's some on the way to the haze, so I'm going to show you how to get up there the quick and easy way. You'll find a couple of these pieces, actually, maybe even three pieces along the way towards the haze underneath the red buildings. But yeah, go and dig, obviously, the bubble gum with your spade, which you make out of black ants. And then go ahead and make sure you've got at least one piece. Then after that, you just got to make your way to the top of the haze can. So I'm stuck by this red buildings. And apart from a little bit of a chasm that you need to get across, I find this is an actually good, easy way to get there. Also, FYI, there is a gold molar in that chasm as well. So it might be worth going in. Anywho, keep following it all the way around until you get to the steps and keep going underneath the steps and you will find even more pink gum in a minute as well. You've obviously got lots of the creatures and enemies and of course you do need a gas mask because you are going to start taking a bunch of damage too. But you can see we've actually gone past the canister and that's what you want to do. So you might even be able to reach this from the other direction. Maybe if you've climbed or built something on top of the steps you could almost avoid the haze completely because once you get to the top of the canister, as long as you're really careful, you don't actually need your gas mask. But you can see there's bubble gum there on the ceiling as well and it does look like it does respawn the bubble gum i definitely harvested the piece that's on the ceiling just behind me earlier and it's reappeared so that's good to know uh, climb up these rocks climb up onto this stick and you are now on the actual steps this is how you're going to get up so we're pretty much nearly above one of the underground laboratories that's why it's popping up with the burgle chip it's directly underneath you somewhere but you obviously need to get an exit entrance that way and yeah we're right here on the corner and that's it just start climbing up the gas i'm saying this because not everyone has realized you can actually get up on top of here some people may be new to the game but obviously old pros you know what to do just keep climbing up don't fall down job done just to illustrate the point, I switched my helmets over to my dust mite hat and you can see I'm not taking any sort of damage, there's no toxic damage up here. It does get too close to that little circle and you will momentarily take some damage, but you can see there is a hole inside, there's a big gash and all you need to do is plug it with some gum. So there's a few things here, I'm not 100% sure if it lasts forever, I kind of hope it doesn't. There are some really good uses for having the haze environment turned on. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just make sure we're doing this the right way. So I've put my gas mask back on just to show you guys. And that's it. All you got to do is just plug that gap with one single piece of chewing gum. It seems like it's a pretty major point, so I don't necessarily think it's going to suddenly peel off or maybe it will stay like that forever. But like I said, I kind of feel, because it's so cheap to actually do, I would like them to actually only last maybe a day. That way you get to explore the haze environment and then it's still a bit of a challenge at other times. Otherwise, it might become just a bit too easy. That said, I can understand why they might have turned it off because there's so many more creatures in the haze environment now that do a lot more deadly damage. It might be just a bit OP, never being able to wear your full tier armor suit to go and face some of them creatures because you always have to wear your mask. So that's why I think they have actually put that there so you can turn it on. But like I said, I still like the option to turn it on or turn it off. Maybe you can actually peel it off or maybe it will just come off after a day. But why, Jade? Why don't you want to make the game easy? Well, just look how many dead bugs you can find if you're roaming around the haze environment. Like, sure, there still will be there after you've turned it off, but I don't think they'll die anymore. They'll be able to travel around freely. This is a great and easy way to get so much of the early bugs early on. If you're not great at combat, which I'm not, you can run around and just be taking all of these bodies to get more bug parts to create more of the armor pieces and stuff that you want. Obviously, it does make things a lot easier to see what's going on and around you. And there are still obviously lots of dangers. The growths will still carry on growing. Although there seems to be a visual bug. Some of them weren't actually showing, but they were still exploding around me. But yeah, it makes it life a lot easier trying to find things like these molars. So let me know. Do you want to be able to turn the haze on or off? Maybe it's a suggestion we can leave the devs. Next up, just a heads up, some places now require a lot of bombs to get through. Now you can use any type of bomb, I do believe. I don't think it has to be just the Splathurst, but they are obviously the easiest to use when you bound and bounce. So things like these doorways, there's a few of them now that you need to remove. 
I need help understanding how to open this door. I'm guessing it might be just storing it. There are other ways into this laboratory now. So maybe that's the point that you're meant to go the other ways rather than just through the main door. And I've shown some of these off in another video, but just to reiterate, some places now will only open, like the ant lions or the tunnels underneath them, when you've killed them and then you've gone and harvested their body parts. So if you was wondering why or how to get underneath and get some other resources you might have seen in other videos, then yeah, obviously it should have been explained that you kill the ant lions and it opens up these tunnels where there's loads of stuff like salt, mint chips and some of the spicy cha-chas. You'll need that tier 2 shovel now to dig up buried treasure as well as mints and the cha-chas in the sandbox you find a variety of these all over and yeah you can usually find them by a little bit of a glint of golden glare also top tip you can also see them in photo mode at the moment maybe it's just a glitch but you can see there's a faint little golden glow just in the sand just to the right of where the modifiers are and the next right, one, Shadow. probably the last one, is what blowing up hell? these rocks now if you see some sort of cracking on one it means that you can actually throw a grenade at it and it will blow it up and this unlocks this this is a quick and easy way to get to the picnic bench now and lastly you need a assistant manager key card to get into certain areas there's lots of these little laboratories all scattered around the map now that you can access so to get that spoilers i'm going to tell you now you can either click off the video or let me tell you about the mini boss and how to unlock it Basically, I've done a guide for this, so you can go check it out. It's a walkthrough where I show you all the steps as I go through, just as a showcase, some of the stuff you're going to encounter. But there's a new mini boss, and he's called the Assistant Manager, and he's pretty much in the Black Ant Hill, which is near the trash. So you've got to go through all that systems, unlock stuff before finally opening this up, and the boss is going to spawn in once you go and press the button here and mash the keys. He's literally just a more suit up, bigger version of the Arc R. It does get quite intense that some of these pillars will start shooting lightning and bolts and then you've got these yellow beams that do lots of damage. I'm obviously in creative mode here to show you guys this. And like I said, I've shown a whole video how to get to these steps. But once he's defeated, you will gain the assistant manager key cards, And that means you can go ahead and start unlocking all them smaller laboratories. Now I haven't found them all yet, but I've got a feeling there's a couple more, not just the one in the sandbox that I showed you guys. So a lot of this is maybe a bit more later game. You are going to need the black ant shovels and stuff like that to craft and make and get access to certain things. So yeah, I just still feel it was a bit of a worthy of a heads up if you're wondering how to get through some of these places. It's not exactly signposted that well. I'm really loving the new mechanics of this though. This elevates this game beyond just the sandbox. This really adds a little bit more puzzle elements to it. And we've always had that in some of the dungeons they've built, like the underwater laboratory and switching the right switches and stuff. But I just love the interaction, that you can actually make sand pits fall apart, that you can topple over a big huge shovel to get up to somewhere. So I hope they keep adding more stuff like that. I think that's one of the best parts of this update. If you have any trouble with anything else, let me know in the comment section. Go and check out the rest of my grounded content, and I'll see you for more very soon. Bye.